Ahmad, tell us a little bit first, what does Silla Tech do? Silla Tech is a social enterprise, just like many of the social enterprises that are here. And it aims to create jobs, and focus on the economic integration of young people in the Arab world in the 22 countries. We focus on three pillars, mindset, access, and policy. And we're trying to figure out what's going on with young people in the Arab world. Do they want to stay? Do they want to go? Do they want a job? Do they want to work for the government? Do they want to work for the private sector? Of them that want to start a business, do they know how? Do they know where to go? Are there loan guarantee funds to support them, etc.? So we published something called the Silatech Index, Mu'ashir Silatech which is the opinion of 15 to 29 year olds in each of the 22 Arab countries every six months. That's and, and, mindset. And what, what information are you gathering from the youth um, from these 22 countries? What, what, do these, what do the youth want to do with their lives? Well, 30% 30 30 of them want to leave. 30% of young people in the Arab world, they just, they just want to leave. And when we ask them what would keep you in the Arab world, 48% of them say a job. If I had a job, I wouldn't leave. A great part of um, the cadre of young people in the Arab world don't believe that they have enough training to go into training that would lead them to placement in a job. But when we talk about entrepreneurship in the Arab world, a lot of times we're talking about SMEs that are going to start out of vapor, but they don't start out of vapor. They start from real human beings. And the data says that most of the young people in the Arab world that plan to start a business within the next 12 months, they already have a job. They have an interest in migrating. They have very strong language skills. And they have a close connection to a country outside of the Arab world. So 10 years ago, we used to talk about brain drain. Now we talk about SME drain, that the people that are leaving the Arab world are the likely entrepreneurs. They are the likely business leaders the likely ones that will develop small to medium sized enterprises and the ones that will make the region's economy more successful. So what do we try to do? We try to offer them training that's connected to a job placement so that the Arab world is not filled with young people that are trained but unemployed. We want people that are trained and have a job. Why? So we can overcome the weighthood challenge. We want them to get a job. We want them to fall in love. We want them to get married. We want them to go rent an apartment, have kids integrate into the economic life of the region. So if they say we want to start a business, well, we give them access to finance, we give them access to markets for their business, and we give them access to something that's very important, whether we're talking about microfinance, SMEs, or social enterprises, it's called BDS, Business Development Support. So if I'm a young person that's trying to run my business, there's a cadre of experienced mentors that say, walk this road, don't walk this road, in pursuit of your own dreams, not the dreams of someone else. Okay. And, uh, well, you mentioned that, what, 30% of, uh, of the youth want to leave and something like 50% want to work in government. Yeah. 58% uh, of... 58%. Can you believe that? Want to work in government. Yeah. But a big part of the ones that want to work in government also say they plan to start a business within the next 12 months. So this simplistic paradigm, the simplistic paradigm that you're either smart and a young person in the Arab world and you want to work in the private sector and you're a genius, you become an entrepreneur. If you're not that smart, you go work for a government. Why do we put this paradigm upon the young people of the Arab world? You know, if you come to the city where I lived for many years, Washington, D.C., and you took a poll of young people, you said, how many people want to work in government? 100% of the people responding want to work in government. But many of them will also become entrepreneurs. And many of them will also become senior managers in private sector institutions, in major global enterprises. So how do we think about building not a society of entrepreneurs? There's no such thing as a society of entrepreneurs. How do we build a society that has all the puzzle pieces that come together to create healthy economies, allow young people an opportunity to integrate economically, and allow them to live beautiful lives like young people do all over the world? And what about your relationship with the private sector in the Arab world? Um, oh, it's very important. So we were talking about training. We have something called a corporate council. And what we try to do is engage with the major companies that are creating jobs in the Arab world. And we tell them, what skills do you need? What kind of training should we be doing? And once we make that agreement, we then get their assurance that once we train cadres of qualified young people, they immediately go into jobs in those sectors. So for example, we in Yemen have a number of projects. One of them is a construction skills regional certification. You go through this process and you get something called a silaqual. 
That Siliqual allows you to work in the construction sector anywhere in the Arab world amongst companies that Silatech has engaged in relationships with who have been assured that if you receive this certification, you're qualified to work where they go. But not everybody's going to be a construction worker, so we have Al-Amal Microfinance Bank, so young people can start their own businesses. But not everyone's going to start their own microfinance institution, right. so we have a loan guarantee fund, so that when a young person goes to a bank and says, give me $100,000, the bank doesn't say, well, I'm going to need $100,000 in collateral for your loan, no Silatech will guarantee that loan, so the young person can get her loan and start her business. So you mentioned that you start with 15 year olds, so I guess you're going into schools, mentoring, uh, training, uh, wh wh how are you training these, uh, these guys? Well, we start with 15 year olds in partnership with organizations like Injaz, but most of what we're doing is 18 to 29 year olds and trying to see where mindset, access, and policy fit. Not all of our interventions are with young people themselves. So you think that's a little bit uh, too late to start with 18-year-olds? I mean, a lot of organizations are starting at a really much younger age. You're right, that's why we're not. Because a lot of organizations are doing great work at a much younger age. So what we're trying to do is okay. capture that market that needs a job, a loan, an ability to start a business, a certification or training that's linked to job placement, we're trying to reach a market of policy makers, not just consumers, right? Changing the world is not about providing services. Changing the world is about assessing an ecosystem that's conducive to success. So policy makers in the Arab world, do they know what young Arab, Arabs want? Well, unless they're studying the Silatec Index every six months, they don't know what young Arabs in their country want in terms of government services, government support, private sector engagement, private sector development of small to medium sized enterprises. So our target market is not just young people, it's the full ecosystem that exists in society that's conducive to the success of a young person in each of the 22 Arab countries. So this index actually is quite interesting. Yeah. What is this index telling us today with this huge wave of entrepreneurship kind of spreading all over the Arab world? Well, some of it's scary and some of it's exciting. The index tells us that 82% of young people in the Arab world feel that they need a wasta to get a job. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, the index also tells us that almost 30% of young people in the Arab world plan to start a business in the next 12 months. Mm -hmm. Only 4% of Americans that are 15 to 29 years old and 4% of Europeans that are 15 to 29 year olds say they plan to start a job in the next 12 months. So the proposition that the Arab world is not entrepreneurial by nature, or as my friend Fadi Gandur likes to say, the only entrepreneurs in the, in the Arab world are not Lebanese, yeah? No, the Arab world is actually on fire with entrepreneurial activity. But the systems and structures and regulatory frameworks that exist in our region are not conducive for those young people to be able to succeed to the extent that they want and that their economies need in order for them to become sustainable. I mean, what's the goal? The goal is not for us to have countries that have a 99% entrepreneurship participation. The goal is for us to have economies that are competitive in a global market. For us to build skills that young people have that allow them to be competitive in a global market. For us to do the research about our own communities, not import that research from the West or from any other part of the world. So what Silatec is trying to do, it's not doing a Silatec. It's doing a Silatec with the International Labor Organization and the Dubai School of Government and the Assam Fetis Institute and AUB. It's with all of these partners, including Wamda and Abraj. Okay. And uh, I don't think we have much time left, but all these young entrepreneurs here, uh, it's very interesting because, uh, um, you know, a lot of them say we need funding, we need funding. You're saying first we start with skills, changing the mindset, and then we go to funding. Uh, no, no, I'm saying if you need skills, go get some skills. If you need funding, go get some funding, but don't whine. <laughs> entrepreneurs don't whine. Entrepreneurs scratch it concrete until it becomes organic, and then they package it and they sell it. So if you're trying to start a business in the Arab world, there are plenty of institutions that will help you. If you need to learn the entrepreneurship education skills, organizations like Injaz can help you. There are loan guarantee funds in the Arab world. There are banks that get it. If they don't get it, reach us on Twitter, Silatech Tweets. We'll make sure that whoever you're interacting with gets it. And uh, shout out to the young Arab leaders. Amazing conference for the last two days.
Thank you. Thank you, Ahmad Thank Yunus. You.